Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. Today we have the G-Shock Carbon Core Guard Analog Digital 200 Meter Quartz Sports Watch, and this is model number GA2000-1A9. And as usual, we're gonna open this thing up, look at all the features and functions, and there are a ton of them, check out the build quality, and then I'll let you know what I think of this brand new watch from G-Shock. Also, make sure you check out my Amazon shopping page for all of my favorite watches that I've reviewed on this channel, and be sure to visit my Teespring merch store, pick yourself up a t-shirt, or a mug, I'll make sure to put both of those links in the description field for you. So guys, there's a ton of stuff to go over with this watch. It's got a lot of really cool features. It's a brand new design from G-Shock. Uh, it's got the carbon core guard case, which is basically resin that's been embedded with carbon fiber. So it's not a completely carbon fiber case. It's resin with carbon inside, but it's just really, really neat. So anyway, here you go. Here's the watch box. Open it up. Now you know what you're going to get inside. You got your module number 5590, written in three bajillion different languages. There you go. Here comes the G-Shock Watch 10. And this is a really, really nice watch, guys. I was pleasantly surprised for the money how many features you get with this watch. Let's get all this boring stuff out of the way here. I'll go ahead and put the specs up on the left-hand side of the screen, then we'll talk a lot more. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff to go over with this watch. Let me get it in focus here. There we go. All right, you're looking at a 48.7 millimeter carbon resin case. It's 14.1 millimeters thick. It's 51.2 millimeters lug to lug. It's on a 21 millimeter resin strap. Now this is an interchangeable strap, which is a first for G-Shock, by the way. It does have a mineral crystal. It's water resistant to 200 meters, which is 660 feet. Again, it has the module 5590. You're looking at about three years on these batteries. They're actually two batteries. I believe one is just for the light and one is for the actual module. You don't have a crown, but you do have four pushers at two o'clock four o'clock, eight o'clock, and 10 o'clock. The case back has four screws. It's actually a dual case back. And I'll show you a picture of the uh, structure of the case. It does have a date at three o'clock. It does have a day at three o'clock. It has five alarms, a countdown timer, world time, chronograph, hourly time signal, auto calendar till 2099, 12 and 24 hour time. Uh, again, G-Shock's first interchangeable strap. It has a hand shift feature, which I think is really neat. It has a hand alignment feature. So if the hands get a little bit out of alignment, you can correct them, which I absolutely love. Uh, it does have a dual LED, one for the dial itself and one for the backlit LCD display. And uh, the bezel is carbon resin as well. So guys, a ton of stuff. First of all, fantastic looking watch. Um, G-Shock always really makes good looking watches, I think. I don't think they really had any duds in the 35 plus years they've been around. I mean, they have some that are a little bit different looking, but this is just a fantastic looking watch. I love how 3D the dial is. You can see all the indexes are kind of like little, um, little cliffs. Really cool. The hands are skeletonized. This is only one of two models that has skeletonized hands. The yellow model and the blue model have skeletonized hands. All the other uh, models are filled in. I'm not quite sure why they did that, but anyway, they did it. Uh, you've got a nine o'clock sub dial that shows you which uh, mode you're in. You've got a six o'clock sub dial that can show you uh, your running seconds. You've got a three o'clock sub dial that can show you, I think, the date the day and also the digital time if you want it to. Again, you've got four pushers uh, and these pushers have the absolute best is pusher feel a thing. The best pusher feel of just about any watch I have ever reviewed. Man, they, they're perfectly knurled. They're the perfect size. I absolutely love these pushers, man. Good, good action on them. You don't have to press them too hard. They're not too easy to press. Um, really, really nice pushers, really nice case. Take a look at the case there. Let's get to the strap. Strap is nice. I'm not quite in love with this single, the single tang right here. I kind of like the dual tang and buckle. Uh, so it's a little bit different. It, it fits a little bit looser, which is not a big deal. I'm just used to the security of those two tangs. Uh, let's take a look at the case back. Now again, this is the uh, carbon core guard case back. This is actually an additional case back on top of the stainless steel one. Let me see if I can get that lettering in there. There you go. I don't know if you can see that real well. See where it says carbon core? And let me show you a picture of how the case back is put together. It's pretty neat. That middle section is your carbon core guard case back. Again, it's resin that's been um, embedded with carbon fiber. And the same goes with the, uh, the bezel, same thing, exact same thing. 
So it's just, it's really well put together. It's solid, it's light, but it's solid. And again, it's got a ton of features. Let me wipe the dial off for you real quick. It's got a ton of features for the money. So I guess, first of all, let's go ahead and go over the modes. You're looking at, uh, here's your timekeeping mode. I'm trying to read this. You got your world time, you got your stopwatch, you got your timer, and you got one of five alarms. Then you go back to regular timekeeping. Now, the only there's only two things about this watch that I don't like. One is the fact that it has a negative LCD display. I've just never been a fan of negative LCD displays. I just can't stand them. They're hard to read, and if you try to read it in anything but kind of like a direct angle, it's, again, really hard to read, and I don't like the fact that the watch is not solar-powered. I don't want to ever have to take this case apart to uh, change out the batteries. I just don't want to do it. And even G-Shock recommends that you send the watch back for them to do it for you. How much they would charge for that, I'm not quite sure. Now, while we're on this case back, now, before I get into all the features, let me go ahead and talk a little bit more about the case back. If you see right here, these are interchangeable straps. They've got that quick-release spring bar right there on both sides, and you can swap out these straps, which again is a first for G-Shock. Really, really cool. I like the yellow. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start uh, talking about these features. All right, so let me, I guess, let me show you the first one. The first one, if you press over here, just if you just press it one time, it'll show you what your current uh, time code is, what your current city is. See where it says NYC, and then it flashes back to the date, which is 5-2. Now, if you want to, you can cycle what you want to see on that 3 o'clock subdial. So there you said 5-2. That was the date. It's 7.58. Now, of course, the analog hands and the digital are always going to match. Always going to match. I love that. Press it again. It'll just show the day, which, is, of course, is Thursday. You go back one more time, and now you're back to the date. Now, now you saw where I pressed this one time. Again, it showed you which current city that the watch is basically. This is your home time. You press over here, this is going to show my world time or my other time zone, okay? See how the uh, 9 o'clock hand rotated up to world time? There you go. So it says that it's in Los Angeles, okay? Now, if you want to swap out the times real quickly, the best thing to do is just press and hold the, what is this, the 2 o'clock button? Press and hold this until it beeps. And then the hands are going to swap to Los Angeles time, which is three hours behind uh, me here on the East Coast. There you go. It's going to go back to regular timekeeping. Now their hands are going to swap. Now, unfortunately, I don't know why it doesn't go backwards. Maybe it's just too much of a drain on the battery. The hands are going to make a one whole rotation. And I guess they're going to point to what, five, uh, five o'clock or maybe six o'clock? I can't remember. I think it's five o'clock. So anyway, let's wait for the hands to do that. And eventually they will get down there. Now, these aren't as fast as, like, the Citizen F900, that satellite wave, where those hands are just blazing fast, man. There you go, 5 o'clock. So now you are in Los Angeles time. Press and hold again. That's going to take you back to East Coast time, or NYC. Now it's just going to go forward three hours, and it'll take us back to 8 o'clock. Yeah, there we go. Now, another cool thing is if for some reason those hands are blocking one of the LCD segments, you can double tap the light and that'll move the hands out of the way. There you go. Now the hands are moved out of the way so you can make sure you can see the uh, LCD segments at uh, 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Press it again. There we go. Now, another cool feature is, like I told you, it has a hand adjustment feature. What did I call that? Hand alignment feature. So what you do is you press and hold the adjust button for, I think, five seconds, and you'll see the 9 o'clock subdial shake a little bit, and that's where you can adjust it. So if it's not, if that little yellow line is not aligning up exactly with the 9 o'clock index, which it is right now, you can actually adjust it. So just press and hold it. There you go. See how it just kind of jerked right there? So I can take this and go backwards or forwards to perfectly line up that 9 o'clock subdial hand. There you go. Now you press it again. I'm sorry, you press the mode button, and I think that's going to shift the hands, I believe, to the hour and minute hand. So now it took us to the hour and minute hand. Now the hour and minute hand move in unison. You can't individually adjust the minute and hour hand. So basically you just keep pressing it until the hour and minute hand are perfectly lined up 
with the 12 o'clock index. And look at that. And I think that's it. So there you go, perfectly lined up. Now go ahead and press it again, get it out of that mode. Now it's going to go back to regular timekeeping. The 9 o'clock subdial goes back to the 9 o'clock index. And it's going to go back to, say, what, 8.02 or 3? God, I wish these hands were a little bit faster. But, you know, you got to remember, every time you do stuff like this, it also drains the battery. Another reason why I don't like the fact that this is not solar-powered. Uh, I mean, I wish they could make this thing solar-powered. And I wish they could maybe make a couple models in the future that have positive LCD displays. But otherwise, fantastic watch. A lot of value um, you're getting out of this watch. It's very well built. I mean, it's solid. It looks good. You know it's G-Shock, so you know it's tough. It's going to last forever. Uh, just a really nice new offering from G-Shock. I like it a lot, man. So let's go ahead and try this thing on, and then I'll give you a loom shot. Wow, really comfortable. Super comfortable, man. Nice. Good looking watch. I love those skeletonized hands, man. Fantastic looking. All right. Let's go ahead and kill the studio light, kill the monitor. Let's take a look at this loom. And I think you might be a little surprised, or maybe you won't. Look at that. No loom. No loom whatsoever on a dial. But with this watch, you don't need loom. So here you go. Now, you also have your option of um, one and a half seconds or three seconds for the loom. There you go. So not only does it illuminate the dial, it also illuminates the LCD segments. And I love the fact that they're blue backlit, which is really cool. And I love how it just kind of fades away. See how it just fades out? Really cool. Fantastic loom, man. So you don't need loom on this watch. You've got fantastic loom from those dual LEDs. All right, let's go ahead and cut everything back on. Let's go ahead and finish up the review. I'm trying to think of anything I didn't cover. I wanted to cover those kind of special features like the hand shift feature, the hand alignment feature, the quick swapping of your different time zones. Um, what else? Guys, I can't think of really anything else to tell you about this watch. So anyway, I'll make sure to put a link in the description field so you can head on over to Amazon's website and pick one up for $130. There are five different colors of this watch in one limited edition model. That's the red one that comes with two extra straps, a NATO style strap and a different color strap. Uh, and that's the only limited edition model. That's $160. All the other models, including this yellow one, are $130. And guys, also make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell. All of us YouTubers really, really appreciate that. G-Shock's going to start coming out with a lot of carbon core watches. Uh, they have different levels, uh, kind of similar to this, but, you know, solar powered. They're going to have atomic timekeeping, uh, bigger watches, more features, more functions. So this is kind of like a whole new thing for G-Shock, starting to make watches with carbon fiber. Uh, I welcome it, man. I mean, did they, you know, they did plastic for years and they did the metal and now they're starting to do carbon fiber. I think it's going to be a huge, huge seller. All of those watches are going to be fantastic sellers for G-Shock. So anyway, go out there and get yourself one again for 130 bucks over on Amazon. And until the next review, I will see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.